Common UI is a very, very nice plugin for Unreal Engine. So today we're going to go over some of the basic functions of it and look at how it can help you make a much easier to work with system for your UI. So first things first, you're going to come up into your plugins and you're going to look for common UI plugin. You're going to enable that and then you'll have to restart the engine in order for it to actually be enabled. After you do that, you now have the possibility to add a bunch of extra things to your UI that will make things work a lot more smoothly. Some simple things, if we come up to Blueprint class and we go into our classes, we can now make presets for our border styles and our button styles and our text styles. So let's just show you uh, a example for a button style and call that BP button style one. And we don't need the event graph for this at all. So let's just look at the details here. These are all the options that you'll be used to in a normal UI for your buttons. So that's a lot of uh, options about padding and we have the text style, the hover text style, which can be different. And then of course we have the base color. So let's make our button a light blue. And then when it hovered, let's make it a darker purple. And then when it's pressed, let's make it green, just to have a very wide margin of what we can see. And the beautiful thing is now, we have this style here, we can apply this style to our buttons, and then if we decide to change our minds later, we have this one place to come back to to change things, rather than having to go back into every single UI in your entire game and changing them one by one. And the same thing goes for things like the text styles and the border styles. But that's not really something I want to focus on right now today, because I want to focus on something that's a little bit more practically immediately useful. And that is the ability to push UIs onto a stack. And if you don't know what that means, don't worry, we'll get into it and I'll explain it to you. So we're going to start with making a normal user face. We can just make a normal user widget. That works fine. Uh, let's call that widget blueprint user base canvas. And this is going to be a more or less empty widget that's just going to exist on our player at all times, which we then can push other widgets onto. So let's start with a canvas or an overlay. It doesn't really matter that much. And then we want to look into our common activatable widget stack. This will allow you to stack widgets on top of each other, meaning that this is a component that you can just put onto your panel here. And when we push a widget onto this, it will get displayed. And then when we push a second widget onto it, that one will display. Then when we remove a widget from the stack, the one beneath it will come back into display. So let's say you have a main menu and in that you have a settings menu and in that you have a video settings menu. This is the perfect kind of thing for that. You open your menu, you have a button that opens another menu, you have a button in that that opens yet another menu. And every time you open a new menu, you want the previous one to no longer be visible. But when that new menu is closed, you want to go back to the previously existing menu. And this all comes with pre-built in transitions as well. So if you're used to normal widget blueprints, you know they very hard cut in and you have to manually like make an animation that you have to play at event construct and it's all a little bit messy. This fixes all of that. So let's real quick go into the event graph and make a custom event here. And that'll be called push widget. We'll use the common activatable widget stack and that one has a function on it called push widget, which of course pushes a widget onto this stack. We connect up the activatable widget class as a parameter for that function or that event. And that's pretty much all there is to it. We could, if we wanted to, just to be sure that we have that possibility, also make a remove widget event because it's very easy to just remove a widget and then we can say what widget we want to remove. So now let's go into our third person character blueprint here real quick or whatever blueprint you have. And we'll at begin play here. Uh, we'll make a custom event, add widget canvas, which will add to this whole thing at begin play. And all this will do is it will create a widget 
the widget blueprints user base canvas. The owning player will be get player controller. And the return value will be added to the viewport. And it's kind of useful to also just promote this thing to a variable. So uh, let's call this widget canvas. That way, if we need to push a widget onto our canvas from some other actor, this is reasonably simple and easy to do. So now let's say we want to add a menu when we press a certain button. Let's say we bind that to a numpad zero for the time being, just a simple test for the time being. This can be any functionality you want, of course. We'll get our reference to our widget canvas, and then we simply push widget, which is the function that we made a moment ago. And when we press this, we will push whatever widget we put into here. So let's go ahead and make that widget. Because here it is important that in the user interface, we create a widget blueprint, but we don't want to make a normal user widget here. Instead, we want to make a common activatable widget, which is more or less the same, but it works with that widget stack that we've just created. So let's call this WBP pause menu or something like that. Let's add a canvas panel again, and then let's add a border. Here we can use a common border because we have the common UI plugin enabled instead of a normal one if we want to. And with that, we get the option to use a border style, which we have made none of those, of course. So let's anchor that to the center, align it at 0 0.5 and position it at zero after we've made it a tiny bit bigger. Maybe we want to make it even a fair bit bigger. And let's real quick just make a common border style and make that background, I don't know, some gray bluish color seems pretty good to me. And we can choose that as a style now. And we can see we immediately get that color. And if we go back into here, just to show you that it does indeed work, if we make this now a greenish color, we save and compile that. Without changing anything in the widget itself, our button has changed. And let's stick with this green for now. Let's add a vertical box inside this border, which will house two buttons. And let's add our text. We can use a common text here as well, but let's just stick with normal text for now because it's just for the example. Add that to both of our buttons. Add a little bit of padding to both of the buttons as well. And that gives us a kind of rudimentary pause menu screen. So this could be keep playing and this could be return to main menu, something like that. Matter of fact, let's actually just give them those names, those texts. And just to finish off the entire thing, let's add a background blur because I like background blurs in pause menus and that Z order will be minus one. And I'll also add in an image that will just color black and very transparent to darken the actual gameplay background a little bit, which will also be a Z order of minus one. Now, if we press keep playing, we can get the unclicked event. And here we are going to need a reference to our canvas, which our third person character has. So the easiest way to do that is in event construct is cast to BP third person character. And we'll get the player character as the reference to cast to that, which should always succeed in theory. And then we can promote that to a variable that we can use later on here. So now as the third person character, we can get our canvas widget and we can say remove widget. And the widget we want to remove is just this widget itself. And of course, in your third person character, now that we have made this pause menu, you actually want to put in the WBP pause menu. And you'll see that only common activatable widgets show up in this list. So any other widgets in your project won't work with that. And now in game, when we press numpad zero, this thing is not properly outlined, which is actually entirely correct because it is set here in the top left corner. So let's just anchor it to the center of the screen with again alignment at 0 0.5 for both and then the position at 0, 0. That way it will always be centered at the center of the screen. So now if we play, we'll see that this works and we need to do the same thing for the background and the blur. But if we keep playing, you can see these things fade in and out very nicely because the common UI plugin. Let's anchor these to the center of the screen as well. 
and now return to menu this is the interesting bit this is what i wanted to show you so we're going to just copy this pause menu over real quick and just call it pause menu 2 that's fine and here we're going to just like add in a third button which will be i don't know we'll call this quick game we're not actually going to put in that functionality and this can be a extra option and keep playing we'll say uh go back the go back button is the only thing that will actually do anything in this one because that is linked up to remove widgets everything else is just for show for the time being but now if we say return to menu and we add the unclicked event to that as well we can say as third person character using the widget canvas we can push a widget and that widget will be our pause menu too and as easily as that we have added a second menu so now when we go back into the game we can press numpad zero and everything works fine and now when we go return to menu it fades over to this other menu and then when we go back it fades back to the previous menu and we can keep stacking this any way we like so a system which needs a lot of sub menus and a lot of these stacks menus in any way shape or form that's where this really comes in handy but as a general framework for dealing with displaying your widgets altogether this is a much more polished way of doing just the raw way that the engine provides you with to begin with so common ui it's very very useful it's very very powerful i hope i've shown off it at least a little bit there's one more thing that i want to show off in a separate standalone video that is the fact that it comes with some features that allow you to show input icons that correspond to the currently used input method so that could be a controller of a certain type or a mouse and keyboard or anything you have access to as a control input but this video is long enough as is so we're going to spin that off into its own separate video because it's really really interesting stuff and a very big thank you to all of my patrons you can see them on screen right now if you want to help out supporting the channel there's a link down below in the description to the patreon page